Is that fair? Hold up. I think we got some breaking news. I think we got some breaking news. Hold up. I hope I, I hope I'm not mistaken. We might have some breaking news. Hold the phone. I this this better than is I think. it Kevin Bird? I think I think how we made a move. We may have some breaking news. Hold up. Whoa. Twenty Howie Roseman sends a 2024 fifth round and sixth round pick Antero Edmonds to the Titans for Kevin Byard, a former all pro safety. You gotta be kidding me right wait, now. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, say that again now. Okay, okay, let's 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 do this, right? Because you know we're doing it on, we're doing this on the fly right now. We're doing okay. this on the fly. We're doing this on the fly. Harry Roseman, the Philadelphia Eagles, they traded a 2024 fifth round pick and 2020, a 2024, 2024 five. Yep, and a 2024 six and Terrell Edmonds for Kevin Byer, former all pro safety for the Tennessee Titans. You gotta be kidding me. You got to be. We off the sauce, Philly. Philadelphia, we're off the sauce. A fifth, a sixth in Edmonds. We off the sauce, Philly. We off the sauce. Dude, this guy robbed this guy. Oh, my God. Howie's about to get another GM fired from the same team in one say, season? Are we serious? Say the guy they traded again. I want to make it. They sent a 2024 fifth and sixth round pick and Terrell Edmonds. Terrell Edmonds, Mr. Cinderblock feet. They sent him to the Titans for Kevin Byer. Kevin Byer. Are you kidding me right now? You got Kevin Byer? Kevin Byer. Two-time Pro Bowl, two-time All-Pro. How old is he? 30 years old in his prime still. 5'11", 212 pounds, he has on his career, for his career, he has 27 interceptions. And What's the money he's making? Does he have anything? Let's go to the contract. That's a, good, that's a good point. That's a good point. Let's go to the contract. Give me one second here. We're doing this on the fly, people. Roll with us. Roll how, with how many, us. How many like, like the money and how many years is he on that deal or is okay. this? Okay, so currently... Kevin Byers is in the first year of a two-year deal that he signed. He's he's, he's in a two-year $25 million deal. Now, this year, he's owed a base four. salary. Uh, this year, he's owed a base salary of four of four million with a $3.5 million signing bonus. Uh, he has a he has an eleven point two million dollar cap hit. And now, and also in uh in 2024, um, he's due. A nine point a nine point six million dollar base salary with a one point seven five million dollar signing bonus, uh, and a four million roster bonus, and he's going to be a nineteen million dollar cap nineteen point five million dollar cap hit. So the Philadelphia Eagles potentially have an out after this year if they decide to move on from him after this year without incurring the biggest cap hit. But again, when you think about where they are and what they're trying to accomplish, you take that swing. You think how we made this call with a ski mask on? Hey, hey, how is his how is his year going so far? Terrell Edmonds, how I mean, well, uh, Kevin Byer, how is his year going so far? Okay, so so yeah, far Kevin the year, year. Okay, so far in the year, he doesn't have any interceptions. Um, okay. but but right as of right now on the season, he has forty-seven solo tackles. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, forty-seven to, forty-seven total tackles. 30 solo, 17 assisted, and uh, and one and one fumble recovery. Six games played, six games started. He's been healthy all year. He's on pace for 115, 120 tackles. And the, and the, and the thing, and, and we know with safety, sometimes what they do don't show up in the stat sheet. I, 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 no, you know what no, I mean? No, no. When, when someone goes like this, Sills, he doesn't have any interceptions. I want to know if he's around the ball. That's why I asked on the tackles. Yep. He's on pace for 120 tackles. So what you're basically doing out there now, you know what they're telling you? They're telling you that Sidney Brown's not quite ready yet. And they're telling you that. And that they're going to bring this guy in to mentor him. Absolutely. And also, I got a fun fact for you. Kevin Byard, Reed Blankenship, Middle Tennessee State alumni, both play for the same college. Both play for the same college. So you're starting to see if there's going to be Reed Blankenship and Kevin Byard when Reed comes back. That's a great move. 
That's a hell would, of a move. I would put that in the category of um that's a hell of a move. And keep this in mind as well. When they brought in Terrell Edmonds, they didn't really give him any money. I mean, Terrell Edmonds no. was a you know, it was just a, a a a quick signing. You know what I mean? That wasn't a signing that was supposed to really move the needle. But you sent a fifth and a sixth round. You basically sent a fifth and a sixth round pick. Nothing for Nothing. an all pro. No, you you you're you're basically taking the money because wow. at the end of the day here, Edmonds and a fifth and a sixth for Kevin Byer, who's um, a Pro Bowler. And, and the all-pro, first team, out. not second team, first team all-pro. You're putting him out there in center field. Um, well, that kind of ties it. That, that that helps them and makes them – that totally does make them better. That and changed, now you have to wait the size coaching here. That's really a great move. That here. really that really, that really, really takes the defense to another – when you come off – see, here's, here's what makes it interesting, right? Your defense has already been playing with confidence these past few weeks because they were able to shut down – a high-powered Rams passing attack in the second half, and then they limit the Jets to twelve to twelve points, I believe, or fourteen points. And then on top of that, you come off of shutting down the number one deep threat in the NFL in Tyreek Hill, the number one passing offense in the NFL in the Miami Dolphins, and then you add in Kevin Byer into that equation with the way Sean decides been calling plays. The Eagles are going for it. They see something. They understand. They understand what's at stake here, and this is what I'm talking about. No need for training wheels. We're trying to win it all. I would say this to you that um, a move like this now. Wait till you see how this guy plays when you. I mean, not that the Titans front is not uh, a good front with with uh, Simons in there. Yeah, but it looks, with Simmons in there, but with, Simmons, 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 Jeffrey Simmons, excuse me. So Jeffrey but Simmons. when you have the amount of activity that the Eagles are playing with up front. You watch this kid and how well he plays and watch how his game gets now elevated because now when you have pressure like this coming, mm -hmm. you watch his interception numbers go up. Yep. You know, one of the reasons why you saw Gardner Johnson's numbers go up so much was because of the 70 sacks that you had a year ago. And those guys, those guys are just sometimes throwing um, – they were throwing punts back there to him. And he was just fielding them. You watch a guy like this here, 30 years old. Um, you know, it, it depends on what kind of injury history he has. 30 years old doesn't freak me out. 32 kind of does for a DB. I got some information for you here as far as his um his history. So Kevin Byer for his entire career. So wow, Kevin Byer hasn't missed a game in his entire career. <laughs> He hasn't in, in his rookie year, he played in 16 games, but only started in seven. He was a second round pick, though. So, you know, he's, they're going to try to rotate him in. What's but, the Titans? What's the Titans record this year? The Titans record this year. So they must be in a fire sale to get ready for the draft in April. So they're one of the teams. Exactly. You have the Titans. The Titans have already admitted defeat. The Titans, they're two and four. They're done. They're, they're Derrick two and Henry's four. Next. The Jaguars are five. The Jaguars, I believe, are five and two. Yes. Um. So Tennessee lost. And the, the Colts, Colts are hanging the, in there. The Colts lost, too. So, yep. um, and uh, what's the other team in that division? Uh, Houston is, what, 3-3, three and three, if I'm not mistaken? Let me let me double-check this stuff. But overall, the Titans are the first team to admit defeat this season. Yes. The first. They're the first. So, week, the 31st is the trading deadline. Yep. The, so, so Jacksonville is 5-2 and two in the AFC South. Houston Texans are 3-3. Three and three. Colts are three and four. Tennessee Titans are two and four. What's it, what's the kid's name in Arizona? The second uh, Buda Baker. Buda Baker. This is kind of a Buda Baker's an A. This is a B, this is a Buda Baker B move. Like yeah. instead of paying the money for Buda Baker because he'll want twenty. Yeah, you Buda's got a guy younger. here. That Buda's is younger. Like, right, watch this. Here's Buda and here's Buyer. You're right here, and I'd rather have Buyer. Because I have more flexibility. Absolutely. And, and you know, the thing about Bayard is, again, you know, I'm not sure. Let me double check this, but I'm not sure if Buda Baker, okay, Buda Baker is a five, okay, Buda Baker is a five time Pro Bowler, two time All Pro. How Can old? Buda is 27. Wow. Buda would have wanted more money for sure. 20 million. Yep. Easily. He, he would have wanted is, a Jamal Adams deal. 
Yep. And also keep in mind, prior to the season, the the, uh, the Cardinals re up Buda Baker. I think I, I think they restructured yeah. his contract yep. and gave they him some more money new, up front. They gave him a new deal. Yep. Okay. Wow. This is this is a hell of a move. Eagles fans, this is what you needed to happen after a win like that. The way that defense played against that high power Miami offense. That's exactly what you needed. You throw in you throw in Kevin Byron into the already confident defense. Like you said, Sills, you now you couple that with the way the Eagles are rushing the passer. The linebackers are playing a little bit better in pass coverage. The Philadelphia Eagles, I don't know, man. I mean, they're they're slowly trending. Those passing numbers are getting better for them in defense, would you say? How are they making moves like this when they're not surrendering assets and equity? A fifth and a sixth and Terrell Edmonds all day long. Easy. I'm Easy. not even thinking. The $4 million is nothing on. I don't care about that. I'll defer it out. Welcome to Philly, Kevin Howe. We need Henry now. Not sure what you, that means, but who, we're... Who do you think had leverage in those negotiations? I, I personally, I think the because they're so low picks, the Eagles. I agree. Because when when the other team has leverage, Tone, you have to take on money. And see, look when the Jets when the Jets made that move for Aaron Rodgers, there were ones. And $150 million. The Packers had the leverage. The Packers had, I mean, they had to accept what the Jets were offering. They had leverage. When you're doing a fifth and a sixth, and it's a four million, and it's the first year of a two-year contract with a three and a half million dollar signing bonus to Kevin Byer, and you only have to surrender a player in Terrell Edmonds, who was a rented dude anyway. Yes, yep. And he also was just a rented dude. Yep, and Bay and Bayard has an ability to play in the nickel as well. He's multi, he's multiversal, multiversal. This, this, this is a. So hey, so let me go here now. Let's take a look at this. Okay. Okay, cornerback, cornerback. You have Slay, Bradbury, safety, safety. Who are the two safeties now? The two safeties are going to be Reed Blankenship and Kevin Byer. Reed Blankenship. And Kevin Byer. We got a lot of experience back there. We got a lot of experience, but Byer got a lot who's of experience. Behind, who's behind Blankenship and Byer? Sidney um, Brown? Oh, uh, you had uh, Sidney Brown and Justin Evans. Justin Evans arguably was our best coverage safety. Okay. Um, and your linebackers right now are Zach slash Morrow. Dean. And Morrow. And Morrow. The only thing, Tone, that looks kind of weird on this, mm -hmm. go with me here on this now in the secondary. All right. Okay. And I know you're trying to win right now. Okay. Of course. I get of it. Course. Of course. But this will all have to be redone next year. Absolutely. And here's what I mean. Because again, Bradbury, you signed on that contract. He was he he was a free agent. Slay, you got the trade. None of these guys back there are homegrown except Reed. Am I right? Yes, yes. And yep. from the backers back, outside of Dean, quite frankly, nobody from the backers to the back end are homegrown, right? The only guy that's back there that's from homegrown, that's a starter, um, is Reed two and linebackers, the two corners are not, one safety's not, one safety is, that's Blankenship. Again, the only you know thing what that means yeah. you're going to have to have a lot of work to be done in the offseason because – Again, you're going for it now. And, and, and by the way, I'm looking how he's looking at it and how he's he's looking to win now, Tone. There's no – there's no and, and, and Fly goes like this. Who cares? Okay, you're right, but it, it's, it's a swing. If right. it misses, you miss big here. And what I mean by that is you really don't have homegrown guys back here now. Um, you have like mercenaries on this. You am I right, Tom? The only guys that are really homegrown are up front. Exactly. And that's actually how the Eagles do business. You know, if you if you really think about it, you know, over the past handful of years, the Philadelphia Eagles have more so drafted their offense. They've supplemented on offense with some trades, like like an AJ Brown, like a DeAndre Swift. They've supplemented certain certain spots. 
But on defense, when it comes to the defensive line, entirely homegrown. Josh Sweat drafted. Jalen Carter drafted. Jordan Davis drafted. Fletcher Cox drafted. Um, uh, Hassan Reddick, he was, you know, he, he was, he was, he was, a, he was a, he was a buy. He was a buy. Um, uh, who else? Um, you, you, you drafted, um, uh, Milton Williams, Martin Tu, Pelotu. The whole, the front is mainly drafted guys. Then you draft Nicole Dean. They don't really draft linebackers like that. So the Philadelphia Eagles are telling you, we're going to draft in the trenches. We're going to draft mainly our offense. Everything else, we're going to supplement with free agents and trades and try to piecemeal it. Let me show you this too. This also is going to go to this is more difficult to coach than having a guy that you've been player evaluating and player development inside your organization. This says a lot to how they're doing business when it comes to keeping the same structure of their defense intact. You see, Tone, the reason uh, – and here's why I'm going here when I go homegrown, and some people in here don't understand why it's important to ask that question. Because at the beginning of the season, the Eagles said we're not really changing our fundamental ways of how we're going to have our structure on defense. You can go out and get players like this and plug them in if you're confident that your coordinator can figure out the chess pieces to be able to put these guys in place. I think this is more of a testament that they are really impressed with Sean Desai and what he has done the last, especially the last four weeks Absolutely. and taking players and moving them around inside of the structure. And I'll tell you what, that, that one of these guys in the secondary has had anything to do with player development. This is coaching. Exactly. When you're like you said, when you're starting to slow down teams week in and week out. Okay. See, a guy like JM goes like this. So you really think player development with Kevin Byer? Where in the world would you get that read that um getting guys like Darius Slay and Bradbury trades and free agents and getting Eagles, linebackers Eagles, that were free agents? The Eagles the didn't develop they didn't give them. How about this? The guy Morrow was waived. The Eagles by the, didn't de by the the Eagles Eagles. Did not develop. That's not player development. Right. The Eagles didn't develop Darius Slay. They're, they didn't develop James Bradbury. They did, they're they they're not going None to develop Kevin Byer. You know what I'm saying? They didn't develop Zach Cunningham. Um, they didn't develop um Nick Morrow. It's um, the coaching. Old, they developed their D-line. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. This is really a testament to the coordinator. That how many look at they're doing this on the fly tone right 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 it's 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 it, it, it's really remarkable because you know a guy like see the thing about the, the Eagles defense more teams play it than not so it's not it's not a complicated defense to assimilate into and then you have Kevin Byron again he's a veteran he's done it all he's seen it all I wouldn't be surprised I wouldn't be surprised if he's playing um, this Sunday against the uh, Commanders. And then oh, also, I think he will. Yeah, and also with that schedule coming up, they understand they're going to begin some elite quarterback. They need somebody back there that's going to hold up, and they knew they would not be able to make that gauntlet with Terrell Emmons back there. They knew it. 